I think they also thought that Americans don't care about their family members at all, you know, because your family is so important. Their biggest conception was, you know, how could you want to move away from your parents? Like, don't you love them? Meet Tyler, an American who moved to Mumbai from a small US town and has been in India for 10 years. He shared how he ended up living with an Indian family, why Indians never say no, and how his American values shifted after living in Mumbai. I'm Max, an entrepreneur and YouTuber from Singapore. Let's go. Do you remember your first impressions when you first came to Mumbai? I remember thinking, where did I get myself into? Because <laughs> it was completely different from where I'm from, from a small town in the States, around 1,200 people. And I remember the first thing thinking was that the amount of people I saw on the streets right away was the amount of people that live in my town. I was scared. I remember, in fact, buying a book that yeah. was, uh, it was called Culture Shock and reading it. And I think that that actually scared me more <laughs> than once I got here and I realized that actually it's a very manageable country, manageable city. It opened my eyes to a lot of different things. What was the most shocking part? Probably the traffic, <laughs> getting from point A to point B, because I'm sure as you've seen that walking here is quite the challenge because there's sidewalks, but they're not very used that often. And you have to really be careful where you're going because you could have vehicles coming at you, you have kids playing cricket on the streets, you have barbers set up, you have vegetable markets, and then all of that can happen and then traffic stops because a cow can walk by. So there's a lot happening. So you're constantly on gear. Was the traffic worse or better 10 years ago? I say it's about the same. I think right now it's particularly bad because there's a lot of construction happening uh. in the city. So that's delaying a lot of things. But uh, for me, I think that the traffic's been the same since I've arrived. I guess there's a big difference in mentality of Americans from the place where you're from and Indians. What's the like, biggest difference how people think? I would say a small one, but I notice a lot is when you go around here, sometimes people are afraid to say what they actually mean. And mm. so that can slow things down. So if you go somewhere and if you go to a restaurant or if you go to a store and if they can't provide a service with you, sometimes rather than being a little bit more direct, mm. they're going to maybe say they can do something and actually they can't. So they're trying to way to get away or to circumlocate the mm. issue. If I say yes, how, how I say yes? Yes. Okay, this yes. <laughs> how is like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> so there was the face, yeah. same gesture. Same gesture, but with but the with, eye, the... With, with a little bit with the face. No? No would be, no. Like, like that? Yeah, uh. like a normal no. But they're not gonna sh say no straight up. Even sometimes you'll go to a restaurant and you'll get a menu and you'll order something and they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, sir, that's actually not here today. Then you go to the next menu, or I mean, the next item and say, oh, we don't have that either. So then rather than just, you know, going through and saying what they don't have, they'll wait for you to go through the entire list before they say, actually, this is what we only have. It's just a bit of being indirect. Why people are not very direct? I think it's because they don't want you to feel bad and they don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I think that's what it is, part of the reason. And they feel that they should be providing a service or they should be, you know, if you're expecting something from them, mm. that they want to be able to accomplish that. So when they can't, they feel bad about it. Different thing I would say is the perception of family. I find that uh, compared to where I'm from, you know, family is so important here. People put family amongst first above everything. I think that look, you can see that when you look at the households mm. and it's like very much a joint family. So you'd have different generations living together and it's an expectation that you stay at the home. Whereas in the States, by the time you reach 18, it's expected that you're out, you're independent, you're doing your own thing. Yeah. Whereas here, you want to be dependent of your family members and you want to stick together and help each other out. So mm. that's a big difference I've seen as well. Which one you prefer personally? Now I prefer the Indian style <laughs> and I like being dependent on others. I like that feeling of a whole family together helping each other out. I know at first when I came, you know, it was my first time getting a job, it was my first time living by myself. I thought that was going to be a great experience. But then I found out, you know, after about a year or so that uh, it's not easy to live by yourself. I have quite a unique story because I met a really good friend and he could see that maybe I wasn't meant to be staying by myself. So he actually invited me to come live with his family. So oh, wow. I lived with the uh, Indian family for about seven years oh, and wow. really formed a super close relationship. And to this day, they consider me their family. I finally felt that, okay, I think I'm ready to get my own place. So I found my own apartment, but it's right below the families. So mm. I still have dinner with them every night. I celebrate wow. with them. We travel together. It's really impacted mm. how I view and how I see India.
Wow, that's so unique. Yeah. When you stayed with the family, how many people were there? I think at one point we were five of us living in a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> so we were very close-knit yeah. together. One of the family members got married, so she moved away, so there was less of us, but yeah, quite a big, big family. What was the attitude towards you as an American from this Indian family in the beginning? In the beginning, I would think at first they were a bit skeptical as to what I was doing here because they had these big ideas of what it meant to be from the States and they just mm. couldn't wrap their head around that I was choosing to live here mm. because if they were given an opportunity, they would do the opposite. But then they realized how much I love the country, how much I liked it here, how much I meant to be here. So that started to change. One thing that changed was we started to understand how each other think because at first, even though language wasn't an issue, Uh, we'd speak to each other in English. Sometimes we didn't e understand what each other meant just because of some of the culture differences mm. or um, the way we viewed things was so different. So that we, that we got to learn from each other very quickly. Any example of this like miscommunication? For example, celebrating a birthday here is a custom that when you cut the cake, whoever's birthday it is goes around and feeds everyone, you know, a little bit of piece of cake. But I didn't have that growing up. So in, in, I, yes, it would be. You would cut the cake and then you'd serve it, you know, on a plate. Yeah. But here, you actually take it in your hand and serve in everyone's mouths. Ah, so, in the mouth. Okay. Yeah, and like, okay. they directly okay. serve you. Okay. And then they take that same piece and then they feed the person next to them. Ah. So at first, I didn't know what was going on. I thought, okay, what's happening here? But <laughs> it was just part of the birthday celebration. Did they have any like misconception about America or Americans? I think that they thought that, you know, we, that that was a dream for most people is to go to the States. And why would you want to leave? When in reality, that's not the truth. I think they also thought that Americans don't care about their family members at all, you know, because here, mm. like I said earlier, here family is so important. Their biggest conception was, you know, how could you want to move away from your parents? Like, don't you love them? By you leaving, doesn't that show that you don't care for them? Them because now they have to look after themselves, especially as they're growing older. And so I constantly have to remind them that I still love my parents and me moving away has nothing to say of our relationship, but it's just a different family dynamic. So you grew up in this small town in Iowa. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest differences of lifestyle there and here? I would say first off the noise. Here there you constantly have noise coming at you from every angle, whether it be from the streets or music from a wedding that's playing across the yard. And that's something I notice when I go back is how much noise there is here because I'll be sitting down with my family back in the States and it's quiet. I think that like, it's too quiet. I need to put some type of noise on in the background. Here you fortunately and you can get a lot of things taken care of for you because mm. there's such cheap labor and things are so much more economical that uh, you can have everything delivered to your door. I mean, just with the app, you can have someone come and they can, you know, repair something in your house. They can give you a massage. They can give you a haircut. So everything is so much more accessible. Whereas in the States, or at least in my town, you have to do everything yourself. Is there any, anything that the U.S. can learn from India? I think a lot. I think India does an amazing job of being really resourceful. I think that's something that I learned is I felt in the States and I think back back now, I was so wasteful of what I had. A lot of stuff that I got was use and throw mm. and I didn't think about it and it would just go in the bin. Whereas I find here, if you have something, you're going to make sure that you use it until you can't use it anymore. And then you're going to make sure, okay, if you can't use it anymore, you're going to take it to someone get it fixed so you can use it. That's something I really respect and I really try to do more of, like even if I have, you know, old clothes that have some rips in it, rather than saying, okay, that's done, I'm gonna try to take it to a tailor or get it sewn or something like that. Or same with my household appliances. Whereas in the States, I think, okay, it's done. It's gonna cost more just to get it repaired than to buy a new one. Whereas here, you are gonna find someone to repair it and make sure you have it as long as you possibly can. How Mumbaikers are different from, let's say, people from Delhi? I don't have that much experience in Delhi, but uh, the times that I've been there, you have to be a little bit more on guard because when people see you there, they see you more as a tourist. Mm. And they kind of, I found that sometimes I've been taken advantage of more often in Delhi than I have here. Whereas I think that here, you know, the people, when they see me, they assume that I'm working, living here. Mm. And so they don't try to, I've never been, feel like I've been cheated that often in Mumbai and they've really geared me. And when I've been lost, they've taken me and and gone out of their way to show me where I need to go. Mm. And so I've always felt, you know, very safe and secure here. Whereas in Delhi, maybe it's just it's a new surrounding. It wasn't that same hospitality feel, I would yeah. say. It's strange, but I feel quite safe here. Yeah, yeah very maybe much. Because, I don't know, I'm a big guy. <laughs> 
but I was like walking around mm -hmm. night yesterday and day before trying to feel the place. I don't see the aggression on the street. No, yeah. there's no aggression. Yeah. And if there is, it's, you know, short lived. If you have two cars who have a little bit of road rage, they're going to be yelling at each other. But then two minutes later, they're going to be fine. Yeah. You know, nothing big happens. I've never had touch wood. I've never had anything bad happen to me here because mm. it is a very safe place traveling alone late at night. And I've had a lot of really good experiences where actually you can see the kindness in people. So sometimes, you know, when you're riding a rickshaw, you might forget something. Like yeah. one time I remember I left my wallet in the rickshaw. You know, anywhere else, like in the States, that would be gone, right? You might not get yeah. your wallet back. But actually this rickshaw driver, he remembered where I stayed, came back, gave it to the watchman, and the next day I had my wallet. That's something I'll never forget. Any crazy stories or memorable stories that you can recall? My first year, we were... My friend and I were eating at a restaurant and I did, we didn't know Hindi at that time. So we were just communicating to the cook about how much we liked the bread. And he got so excited, starting, you know, it felt like he was yelling at us in Hindi. And he pulled us out of our chairs, brought us back to the kitchen. So I thought, okay, fine, he just wants to show us how they're making the bread. Mm. And actually he started to force us to make it with the cooks. Oh. So that was like, you know, so unexpected and yeah. it was a great experience mm. and something different. What's your favorite Indian food? I love biryani. Biryani and I would say shami kebabs are some of my favorites and rajma masala. In Mumbai, anything special that everyone should try? So I think the most typical is wada pao, which is this um, like fried bun. potato. It's uh -huh. kind of like they call it the Bombay burger because uh -huh. it's like a fried potato between two buns. That's a must. And I think pani puri. You, pani can't, puri. you can't miss pani puri. It's an experience. Tell me about like Bollywood movies and like Bollywood dance. Uh, I know you practice. Yeah, I so, love Bollywood uh, dance. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, tell me how you found this love of Bollywood dance. Probably within my first year. My friends, they wanted to take me to a Bollywood movie. I'd never seen one before. And even though it was completely in Hindi, they mm. said, you know, with all the dancing and we'll help you figure it out. So I went for my first Bollywood movie and immediately I was attracted to the music. <laughs> I was like, I need to listen more of this. I quickly asked my friends for all of their recommended songs and fell in love with the music and one thing that's kind of different is I really fell in love with old Bollywood music mm. uh, like music from the 70s or 80s and there was one dancer in particular her name's Helen mm. and she has some amazing dance moves so I would just put that on YouTube and try to copy her moves and that's I think where my love happened for Bollywood was through Helen and my friends giving me all of their playlists <laughs> One thing I love about Bollywood music is if you notice, if you go out with your friends and there's some Bollywood music happening, everyone knows the moves and they're always the same moves. So after two, three years of being here, you quickly learn, okay, this song's on, what's going to be the hit move? And mm. everyone does it together. Why people are so into Bollywood in general? I think it's just, it's part of the life here. I mean, if you look at the major actors, you know, there's like, I would say compared to the States, there are less big actors. There are less big ones, but they are featured in everything. You know, you're going to have Shah Rukh Khan and he's going to come out with two, three movies in a year where in the States you might have one actor and that one actor is going to come out with a movie every other year, for example. <laughs> Everyone wants to go see the latest movie. It becomes quite the event and I would say watching movies in the theater is more popular than at home. I know that you speak Hindi. You would say your Hindi level is advanced or like... I say almost, intermediate. Almost. Yeah, intermediate. I can get by. I can defend myself when I'm on the streets. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> what I heard is you can survive without Hindi living here. Because you can survive with just English. In is Mumbai, it? yes. In Mumbai. Yeah, in Mumbai, yes. Yeah. Because if you go around, people know enough. They might not be able to speak Hindi, but they can, or English, but they can understand it. They might reply back to you in Hindi, but they understand what you're saying. And somehow you can communicate with each other, even if it's just small gestures. Mm. You know, you might be familiar with the head wobble, then that helps you figure out what they're trying to say. I would say enough people speak English here that that's never been an issue. Hand gestures. Often I see that taxi drivers, they do like, when someone knows, not give you away it's like yeah this kind of thing yeah. there's a another there's a... unique thing i learned here was how to go to the bathroom uh. is go like this uh. and that signals you have to go to the loo and then little different things is uh you know counting here so when you count like uh -huh. if you were to count how would you count i would count like dun, 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 yeah dun, dun, so here dun. it's one two three four five six seven eight nine which is actually way more practical because you can uh. count more that way. On, using one hand. Yeah, using, using one, one hand. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anything else? Are yar. 
what's that? Are yaar. It's like, come on. Come on, bro. Uh, what are you doing? Are yaar. <laughs> <laughs> How your personality shaped because living for 10 years in, in India? My perception of personal space has changed because here there are so many people. Here, the personal space is much less mm. and they're willing to share things a lot more frequently. So I remember the first time I went to a restaurant and I didn't know, you know, the social norms or whatever. So I went and sat down. I was having dinner by myself. And then all of a sudden, a stranger came and sat down right in front of me and started eating. And so for me, that was weird because in the States, you would never do that, right? Yeah, like yeah. if this is a table, this yeah. is for you. Whereas in this restaurant here, it was very much a communal feel. And it was, a, you know, this table has space for three. So we're going to have all three people sit there and eat together. For me, that was a different thing. And I like that uh, even if you go to a friend's house or whatever, you know, they're going to welcome you if you're going to stay the night. Okay, just stay on my bed. You're going to put someone everywhere. There's mm. not this concept of, oh, I don't have space to put people. You yeah. will make space to find people. Uh, to put people and that I really enjoy about living yeah. here. What would be your advice to someone who is thinking maybe to move to try to live in Mumbai in India? What would be your advice? I would say you have to learn to be patient. Things here take time. Whether it be when you're first stuck in traffic because traffic is such a big part of your life here. Mm. If you're gonna go different places, you're gonna have to be prepared. Okay, there's gonna be traffic. So you can't let that get to you. And then if you're going to be living here and you have a lot of paperwork that you need to do, mm. there's a whole bunch of bureaucracy that you have to go through. So you have to go to person A to receive this paper, then go to person B to get it filled out, then go to person C to make a payment just to go back to person A. Mm. So in your head, you think, couldn't we have just all done that at one spot? If you really hark on these small things, it's gonna get to you. So you just have to be patient. And I think this is for a lot of places. You have to be open-minded and willing to see things from a different perspective because, you know, sometimes we take for granted here, people do speak English. So we think that because they speak English that we have the same mindsets. But then sometimes you realize that, no, actually there are those cultural barriers. Mm. And so you have to take the time to see where the other person's coming from uh, to yeah, see it from a different lens. But overall, I would think you just need to be ready to tackle the city, mm. to tackle, you know, the heat, the food, the culture, all of that. Let me show you some magic. If you click on this video, I will disappear and reappear again. Let's try it. Three, two, one.